Uh, hello, my friends. Uh, in our last section, we completed this upload product page. So now it's time to make this landing page. So there are a lot of things we need to do, like this the filter, feature, and then search feature, and then load more feature. So I think yeah, it will take really long time to finish this landing page. But anyway, uh, before starting making this page, uh, there's one more thing we need to do in here. When we click in this submit button, if we didn't fill all of the fields, so we need to have these alerts. But actually, we didn't make it like this in our last video. So we need to make it like, like that in our application. So we come back in here. So before doing this HTTP request, we need to do something. Is it uh, this value? Uh, is the empty like this and or this description value is empty or price value is empty or product and continental value is empty and then there is no information inside the image state like this we just need to alert fill or the fill first and like this so now it's time to make our landing page so to make this landing page first we will make a empty landing page and fetch all the product data from MongoDB. So after in here, after uploading all of the products in here, so we come in here, uh, we need to fetch the data we uploaded inside the upload page. So that's what we need to do for this step two. After that, we will create the landing page template. Just uh, make the template like this uh, by using the end design and we will display product list in the landing page so first we will make empty landing page so go to our text editor and then go to landing page so first I will run our application by typing npm run dev so now we need to change this page into this one so come in here we are going to delete this one, this one, and fetch all the product data from MongoDB. And we will use the X, Axios and to the post request, the location will be API and product and get products. And we also need to put the variable in here, but we will put it later. And then in response, and if response and data and success we do something if it was a failed so alert and fail to fetch product data so and we will make this API inside a product controller so go to product browse in here copy and paste it copy and paste it delete all the unnecessary parts and uh, we first need the product models in here and in here find and we will bring all of the information inside the product collection so and we will also call the error and product callback in here so if we got the error return response the status 400 and json success force and error and the return and if it was successful and response the status a 200 and json success true and we will send all of the product information like this. It'd be better to say products. 
because there will be a lot of products information. So we go back to our front end landing page in here. Uh, we are going to make the product state so products and this will be the array because we will put a lot of product information in here import the user state and set product in here res response and data and products because the we name it products inside of product in here products so we got all of the product information inside this product state. So first we will print this value in here. Console log response data products in here and save it and come back to our application. And we, we will turn on our console. Console and yeah, we have 12 arrays. Yeah, there are so many products because I I will upload so many products already, so that's why we have this many products information. So the last thing we need to do is ah uh, first we need to make the a landing page template. So in here uh, like this we need to make the template. So come back to our landing page and we need to make the template in here. Now I'm going to save it, come back to our application. So now we can see like this. So now we need to make this body part, this body part. But if you see here, as in one row, we will have four columns. But if we make it smaller, if we have a three column and only one column in one row. So we need to make this one responsive. So to do that, so row, Order. This is for the margin, so we will give the margin for this row, and inside this row, uh, we will bring the products, product, so product and map, just product index. Are uh, we just uh, better to make this one in here? So make it simpler. So render card and make this one in here and copy and paste it in here. Return call. So one low for column. So one low is the twenty four size. So this one column the size will be just a six. So when it is a large size, we will just give the six size for this column. And when it is just a medium size, we will give the eight. And when it's extra small, like this, extra small, we will give 24, this one column, 24. So car, So we put the title like this, product and title and product and price, okay. 
because in here we just put the price instead of this description for this product so that's why i put this price inside of this description so well, i want to put this dollar mark in here so like this so I'm going to save it and then go back to our application here. Okay, so we did import this meta. So actually meta just comes from this meta part row. Okay. So now we have uh, all the cards, so 12 cards, but the difference between this one and this one is that we don't have this image for the products. But this image is not just normal, it has the animation in here. So that's why we need to do something for this image. So we can put the images in here inside this cover. Well, I want to make the component for just this image slider. So like this and then image slider and we need to give the props named images and product and images so we put all of the images data uh, inside the image slider components as a props so we need to make this image slider so we can use this image slider inside a different component. So rather than just making inside a landing page further, so we make it inside the UTS further. So we can use this one inside the other component too. So image slider .js rfce and import it. Import image slider from utils and come back in here the slider function come from the entity design or uh, name the carousel from the entity design and carousel and autoplay and props and props and images and map image and index okay we need to use this one Seven. HTTP local post 5000 and image and art and product image and save it and then we go back to our application here okay maybe there is some error oh, it has to be 5000 instead of five, 500 and we also need to give the key for this div so we are not going to have any error and save and come back to our application Oh, yeah, we need to give the styling for this one. So, style read 100% and max height will be 150 pixel. Save it and come back in here. So, now we can have all of the products image really well. So thank you for watching this video and have a nice day and see you in our next section. Thank you.